It's my great pleasure to present Leo Leppanen, who's a PhD student and soon a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Helsinki, and Salah Sala Salmala, who is a news editor at, at the Finnish news agency, STT Lettikuva. And we have been working closely for the past three years, so I'm really excited to hear about what you're going to talk about. Thank you. Thank you, Gusse. So this presentation is about text generation in the newsroom, and we'll be looking at a few different aspects of this. Uh, but before we get to the text generation technical details, I'll hand this off to Salla to give a industry view into what kind of things they, the industry expects from text generation and news, automated news production. Thank you, Leo. Really good to be here, even though only virtually because of the global pandemic. Uh, I am Salla Salmela, producer in uh, STT, the Finnish news agency. And first, just a few quick facts about us as a company. We are the national wire in Finland, uh, among the oldest wires in the world. Uh, most of the Finnish speaking uh, main media in Finland uses our uh, media services, our news services. And on top of that, we also have uh, companies that we help with their communicational needs. We are owned by other Finnish media companies. Thanks, Leo. Next slide. Uh, and since we are here to talk about the automation in newsrooms and uh, bringing new tech into newsrooms, uh, here is an overview on our strategy on news automation. Uh, in STT, we believe that um, all workflows that can be automated should be automated, but only if the solutions uh, are genuinely working and are genuinely uh, trustworthy. We also uh, we want broad solutions. We don't want to end up with 10 or 100 different solutions because that would make uh, our work slower, not easier. Um, also, uh, we do not believe that uh, automation will uh, replace humans as journalists. So we do not want to get rid of any of our professionals. We just want to uh, unlock their full potential, so to say. And why we are taking part in this kind of co cooperation as Embedia is because we don't have a vast department for development and uh, like many in-house coders. So that's why we need uh, to cooperate to fulfill these goals. Uh, we have also asked our journalists themselves what they would like to see in the future uh, when we implement new tech into the uh, newsroom. And when we ask them, what would you all wish from these new solutions? Usually the first thing that comes to their mind is that they want these uh, new solutions to take away the most boring routine tasks from them so that the human can uh, concentrate on what they do best. For example, interviewing or digging into scoops and et cetera. So basically journalists hope that their uh, work would be more efficient and faster and easier. And also data journalists have uh, high hopes for the new tech. Uh, it's very time consuming to dig into big data, for example. So if there are uh, solutions that can find trends, for example, or changes from within the big data faster than a human can, this would make uh, our life easier. And also our journalists see that uh, these solutions will not replace them, but uh, they will be uh, like complementing their, their work and um, making it easier. So basically this is what our newsroom thinks of automation in a nutshell. Thank you, Salla. So based on these long discussions we've been having with Salla and other media professionals, uh, we took a long hard look at what do we actually want from automated text generation for these kinds of journalistic purposes. And what we rather quickly identified is that in any system that produces text for journalists or for journalistic purposes, the accuracy of the output is paramount. Uh, we could build a system that is as fluent and as prosaic as Shakespeare, but if the output is nonsense and the system produces fake news, then the system is a failure outright. So we need to work within this larger framework of what can we 
accomplish while retaining this extremely high accuracy of the output. Another important aspect we identified is that we need the systems to be have practical transferability between different domains, meaning that we want to build, a, for example, a general architecture that can be then applied to different kinds of topics to produce different news texts from different data. And here I want to highlight the word practical because one key shortcoming we identified in a lot of the uh, pre-existing state-of-the-art systems is that they are technically highly transferable, but those transferability uh, features depend on the existence of huge data sets that might not exist or do not exist for many languages and many domains. So they have theoretical transferability, but not necessarily practical. And that was one of the key things we wanted to investigate. Naturally, in terms of the Embedia project and the multiple languages we work with, we want these systems to be multilingual, or at least be able to be multilingual. And we want these to be extensible and modifiable. And what we mean that by modifiable especially is that if something is identified as going wrong in the system, we need to be able to go and surgically correct those mistakes rather than having to start from scratch and hope that we do better next time. There are also very, very important questions related to trustworthiness and transparency. And these tie to ethical and legal concerns that we wanted to keep in mind. Uh, in terms of ethical concerns, for example, one big question is how do we sort of align our work with the fact that in many legal contexts, whatever news is being published, there's some human, presumably an editor in chief, who is legally responsible for that text output. So how can we ethically then uh, ask a human to take responsibility of a system? And that's only possible once we achieve high trustworthiness and transparency to the system so that those people responsible can understand what they are taking uh, responsibility of. There are also highly interesting, at least to me, questions that are related to, uh, for example, intellectual property rights, for example, who owns, who is the creator of an automatically created news text. And we wanted to avoid uh, certain approaches that would raise questions of, are these texts even copyrightable? Uh, at the same time, I must give the caveat that I am far from a legal scholar. Uh, I have not, I have no background in those things, so please do not take my word on that. So, based on these these discussions and these thinkings, what we ended up producing is a rather general text generation architecture, where. The idea is that we have this one larger architecture that we then apply to different types of generation problems. And in this larger architecture, basically the kind of steps that are undertaken or completed are that we first ingest into the system a large amount of data, hundreds of thousands of data points potentially, from which the system then identifies what are the most newsworthy things here? What are the most important things in this large data set? The system then plans a document around those most important or most interesting data points while also balancing the coherence of the text. It's not enough that we pick the 10 or 15 most newsworthy points if the resulting text is then all over the place. We want to also keep the sort of a common thread running to the text. The system then associates these uh, identified data points with basic natural language phrases, and then continues to process those phrases into a single logical text, which is then the output of this system. A key feature of this architecture of ours is that we've taken to length to separate, produce, a modular architecture where we separate the language specific processing from the topic specific processing. And what this means is that we can take a system 
built in this architecture for one topic of news, one specific news type, and reuse the most of those, most of the system when uh, we build a similar system in an adjacent news domain. Or similarly, we can take a system that is producing news about some phenomena in one language and very easily transfer that system into another language. So we can reuse significant chunks of this, of this architecture. And this addresses one of the key weaknesses identified in earlier news generation systems where these systems were not reusable in practice. Another key aspect of our approach is that we make all critical decisions in the generation process with trustworthiness in mind. So all the critical decisions are made using heuristics that can be hand-tuned and hand-corrected. And then we've identified certain places where we can integrate neural processing that produces, tends to produce potentially more fluent and uh, more sort of qualitatively better results, but we are not always so certain that we can guarantee that the result is perfect. So we've identified places where we can integrate these kinds of neural processing things to save aspects of the system. So we essentially produce this uh, hybrid approach that attempts to take the best aspects of non-neural processing and the best aspects of neural processing while resulting in something that retains the high accuracy that we are after. So what do we apply this larger architecture to? Uh, one of our key case studies is producing news text from Eurostat dataset. Uh, the idea here is that these, these news texts are short. They describe the most salient or important data points identified automatically from a Eurostat dataset. And they could be used, for example, as news alerts to journalists. That's one re really safe way of using them. So a journalist might say that, oh, when that dataset updates, send me an update of what are the most important things that relate to something I'm interested in. And then that text replaces the blank, uh, blank paper in front of the journalist and gives them an easier starting place. Alternatively, in cases where it's highly paramount that uh, the news agency wants to be, so, so to speak, first on the scene, you could perhaps first publish something machine generated with a suitable disclaimer, and then that gives a journalist time to work on the, uh, the analysis and improving on the text but sort of gives you that, that initial, initial uh, quick response time. Uh, to that end, I'll now show a quick few example texts. Uh, these generates the, the system we built. Uh, the generation times for these texts are on the order of 20 to 30 seconds. So I've taken the liberty of uh, already generating some of these texts, but after my presentation, I'd be happy to perhaps take any audience requests there. But here is, for example, an example text produced completely automatically with the system uh, being tasked to produce an English language text from European data about consumer prices. And the system has been told to focus on Finland. So there might be interesting things about other countries that are more interesting, but here the user has said that, no, let's ignore those other countries for the most part, but let's focus on what's the most important thing or the most potentially newsworthy thing for, for Finnish, uh, Finland in this case. Another example here is the exact same text, but because our system is multilingual, we can produce the same text in Finnish in this case. So this was, would presumably be then more useful to uh, STT than the English language text. But uh, I wanted to include the English because I assume a large segment of our audience today is not able to understand Finnish. Again, we are the system is automatically identifying what are the most important data points and then building these narratives around those data points. We could also, for example, 
produce an Estonian language article discussing Norway, or perhaps a Finnish language article discussing the healthcare cost uh, in Ireland. So we can take all these different Eurostat data sets and produce descriptions of those in uh, any of the supported languages we, we have here. So we separated the language and the topic of the, of the discussion in that sense. And here is, I believe, a final example. This is talking about Spain in Russian. I speak no Russian, uh, but we have a Russian speaker on staff who has uh, promised me that this, this makes at least a lot of sense. And let me just see, how do I go back like so? And can you see my slides again? Yes. Excellent. And now we'll go back. So um, before we wrap up and give time for questions, I'd like to highlight an aspect of text generation that might be non-obvious to some uh, uh, to some of our audience. And that is that we can use text generation in the newsroom for other purposes than producing news alone. So another case study I'll re extremely briefly describe here is that we've been uh, building a system that takes the other Embedia tools, such as the comment moderation and these kinds of uh, text analysis tools, and then automatically uses those to analyze what's happening in the comment section of a news article. And the idea here is that reading through a large comment section is both time intensive and probably not too great for one's mental health, I would assume. Uh, so this would then allow a journalist to get sort of an at glance understanding of, oh, what are the most important or the most prominent topics being discussed? Uh, in the comments section of my news article and are the people talking about those things in positive or negative terms and so on and so on. So we answer things like how civil is the discussion, what are the comments talking about, producing an automated summary of the discussion, uh, are the comments positive or negative and what are the most prevalent topics being discussed. At this point, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'd be more than happy to welcome any questions you have, have to me or Sal.